Hey everybody, what's up? God is good all the time, all the time. God is good. God is the greatest all the time, all the time. God is the greatest. God is absolutely the best. He's amazing. He's wonderful. OMG, if I were to tell you all the great things that he has done for me, believe you me, I would not finish or vid my video this evening because of how wonderful, you know, God has been to us. Um, you know, I've, I've been reflecting on something just recently, you know, when you're a baby, you can dr eat the little gerba, uh, that little gerba thing there that they give you. I don't know what is in it, but I'm sure it's something nutritious and you drink milk or they are lactoplus, those kinds of things, breast milk and a lot of the things that you, uh, consume are liquid because of the stage that you are at. So let us look at it this way. When you're a baby, you drink milk. Right, as you grow older, because your body is now maturing, um, you have to increase your diet, increase the food you intake, because no longer will milk sustain you sufficiently. All right, it can probably hold you for an hour or two, but after that, then you're going to hear the rumblings and the grumblings, uh, and the stomach cries for more, because you're now older and your body your cells have increased so therefore it needs increased and increased diet and increased food and increased nutrient and i'm going to lighten it onto us as human beings just as how when you're a baby you drink your milk as you get older you increase it with more solid food until you're older then the solid food replaces milk as a meal because if as, if as an adult you start to drink milk as a meal, then you'll pay the repercussions for it. When you're growing as an individual, when you're growing as a human, sometimes it's going to be a very lonely road because sometimes the very closest persons in your space will say, boy, you have changed. You used to be a little more, you know, accommodating of a lot of things. Now you're not. You're very stern and you're very disciplined. You're very persistent in your dreams and your goals. No longer do you have the time to waste and to idle with us. And you find a loss in friendships because you're now going through the teething pains of growth and development because you're now on the path of success, trying to achieve success. And that road is going to be a very lonely road because now what is going to happen is that you're going to be separating the sheep from the goat. You're going to now know who it is that will be your long standing for the long haul friends and the families you will now be a part of. And what I want to encourage a lot of us is that I don't want you to be daunted when you're traveling that road of success and that road of growth and development and it's lonely for a period or lonely for a season that you're going to die you're going to cripple let us also juxtapose it to a jewel being refined so the gold chain that you wear or the silver chain or platinum or you know all of those fancy things rubies and diamonds and the emeralds the refiner has to put it in the fire because there are elements on it that needs to be burnt. So you have to go through that burning moment. So it's a loss of friends. Sometimes they may get hit financially. Um, uh, sometimes persons may become ill. Sometimes it's just a whole change in your life. A lot of changes, a lot of experience, because what is happening is that success, growth and development, your cells are now beginning to grow. It's beginning to change, twisting and forming so that it can now metamorphosize you into the successful person that you are designed to be. I don't want you to get daunted during those periods. It's dark. It's lonely. We don't like it as human beings because we like the fan and the fame and we like when all the, I don't want to say glory, but all the attention is, is centered around us. We feel good when the attention is placed on us. But during the growth and development, achieving the success, it's going to be a very dark and lonely road. You're going to be understanding what valley moment is like before you see the mountain top. I don't want you to get daunted. I want you to continue while you're 
going through the growth period and the developing period it has to get sometimes some crushing it has to get sometimes some some squeezing and some bending but believe me you're being fashioned just as how the potter fashions that clay you're being fashioned into the successful individual that you're becoming i don't want you to be become daunted i don't want you to become very despondent i don't want you to get weary in your well-doing because at the right time you're going to reap what is being sowed even though it doesn't look that way even though it seems as if everything good that you're doing yet the bad is happening it's a season of growth and development you know it's a season of growth and development where you're now seeing the wheat from the tears and then one day you're going to just become and evolve into the swan that you were designed to be. The beauty that God had design, designed you to be. You were preciously made by God. You were fashioned in his image, beautified, made in a marvelous and in a wonderful way. Because he knows the plans he has for you, plans to prosper you, plans not to harm you, but to give you a bright future and a wonderful hope. So while you're going through the teething pains of growth, development to achieve your goal, which is success, don't be daunted and discouraged or despondent in your moment of valley. Don't be daunted when it is that the sheep have now been separated from the goats. So when you find that the friendships that you thought were solid friendships, friendships built on a solid rock, that when the storms come and the foundations get shaken, it didn't stand. Because that's not your design. That friendship wasn't for you. When you're going through the valley moment, you're going to understand that milk will not cut it. You have to eat the solid meals. You have to build on your stamina. When we think of Daniel, Daniel that was thrown in the lion's den, and when the king wanted to present his food to Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and Daniel said to them because they didn't want to eat the food or you know to worship the god that they worshipped and uh, they would have um basically give them their own food and daniel said don't worry we will survive on the food from god and they ate all the nutri the nu nutritious food like the vegetables and the, the fruits you know and at the end of the week i think it was it's a week or two they're about they were more fit that the others who would have ate the so-called lovely meals. The point I'm making is this. Milk alone will not cut it. Milk alone will not cut it. A farce of a friendship will not cut it. Friendships that are not solid and whole. That are not built on the foundations. And the principles of God where it says. Think on things that are lovely. Think on things that are just. Think, think on things that are honest. Think on things that are of a good report. You dwell on these things. And when we think of the fruit of the spirit, we think of love. We think of joy, peace, patience, long suffering. When we think of what the acronym or the meaning of love, it says love keeps no records, records of wrongs. It knows no evil. It doesn't gossip. It doesn't tear down. It does not slander. It persists. Remember I spoke about persistence in my other video. A lot of times we wonder why it is a lot of persons are wealthy and I realize the formula apart from investing wisely and saving and all of that it is developing the craft of love and giving and investing in it investing in love and giving a man was asking a wealthy a billionaire or millionaire multi-millionaire how it is that you became so wealthy and he says I'm gonna tell you it's loving and giving and i'm not talking about a christian man he says love and you give treat others as you would have them treat you
and you surround yourself with like-minded people. Think of your friends right now. And generally, when you hang with your friends, what are the kind of conversations that you have? Because what a lot of persons don't understand, to achieve success, you don't achieve it in and of yourself, by yourself. Yes, God helps you, but you need human beings. We were not created to be alone. So sometimes people feel, oh, it's just me and God alone. No, 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 no. Yes, that's important, but you're, you're created for each other. We need each other. When you think on your friendships, I heard Les Brown saying that, um, based on the income that you earn, it can tell the kind of friends that you have. Based on the income that you earn. So your income is a strong determin uh, well, a a determining factor of the kind of friends that you have. The kinds of persons that you surround yourself with daily. And I'm not talking about co-workers that you have to work with. I'm talking about the friends that you spend majority of your hours with apart from being at work. Do your friends inspire? Do your friends lift up? Do they speak highly of others in your presence? Do they speak highly of you? To others when others speak with you about them you have to look at these things because a, a lot of times people say I want to be wealthy I want to be successful I want to be healthy not realizing that a big part of that is the kind of friends that you keep a big part of your achieving that success during your growth and development period has to do with the kinds of friends that you surround yourself with what are the conversations that you have daily? Are they conversations about building your life, building your, your uh, what should I say now, your network and the people that you are surrounded? How is it, what is a conversation surrounding? What are your conversations like? Is it seasoned with salt? Tasty, lovely, just, honest of a good report. So in order for you to achieve all of that, you have to look at the kind of friends that you surround because those are a big factor in you achieving your success because you can't do it alone. Yes, God is important. God is the author and finisher of your faith. He's the one that directs everything. However, he gave us volition. So the choice is really up to you. So you need to check your friendship bag. Go into your friendship bag. Look at your friends right now. Match it up with the word of God. Look at what love speaks about. Because if it is not love, it is not of God. Because love is God. If you want to call him love, you want to call him God, Jesus. They're all the same. Love, God, Jesus. And when we look at the, the in-depth meaning of what love is, you have to analyze that. Match it up. Just as so when you're doing your schoolwork, you make your analysis. And you make your comparisons. So you have your friends. You write down your friend's name. And you look. And you look at what love is. And I'm not talking about perfection. All of us. We're not going to necessarily achieve every single solitary adjective that love gives us and describes to us. But you look at the fundamental things. It forgives. It keeps no records of wrongs. It doesn't gossip. It doesn't slander. Those kinds of things. It lasts forever. And it looks to help looks to lift up so that you can soar as an eagle so you have to you have to be in the know to see if you are an eagle or a chicken and the friends that you have if they're eagles or they're chickens you need to study the characteristics of the eagle when the eagle reaches a certain age i, I was watching a video i don't remember what age something like about maybe 30 because they live as long as humans, you know. I think they have this three score and ten and maybe a little bit above that, thereabout. But at about, I think it's age 30 or that, thereabout, you know. They begin to lose. Remember the growth and development period is a valley period. The period where we go into the fire, the volcano. And what starts to happen is that the feathers of the eagle starts to come off. And he uses his beak and hit against a rock until the beak drops out and you know what happens after that is like the caterpillar be before it becomes a butterfly in the cocoon and then it goes and it's there and it's there and then in one day it becomes this beautiful butterfly so what happens is that when the old 
has passed away, which is the old feathers and the old beak, a brand new and beautiful and even more fervent becomes alive and is formed on that eagle and the feathers. Oh my goodness gracious. When you look at the eagle, you say, how majestic. And he goes on to live for another 30, 40 years. After going through that valley moment, that growth and development moment, but the eagle decides to allow himself or herself, male or female eagle, to go through the valley moment. The valley moment is a blessing moment. It means that you are going to experience the mountain top, but that choice is all up to you how you deal with it. You can either be bitter about it or you can be better during it and after it's all up to you remember the choice is yours i can only encourage you i can only suggest it to you i can only implore you but i can't force you to do it only you can do it so i'm encouraging you and i'm i'm saying to you that during your valley moment because each of us we have our valley moment it's a growth moment it's a blessing because we only see blessing as right away instant gratification we achieve the wealth and the health and all of that but we also have to understand that our blessing really is in the valley moment it means that there is that there is that time for change but change for the better so it means that your feathers are going to be plucked out and your beak is going to come off so the kinds of friends that you have, if they're not seasoned with grace and seasoned with salt, they're going to be plucked out and the beak is going to drop off. They're going to be shed aside and you're going to be alone in that valley moment because you're going to now see who you are and the things that need to come off from you. Slander, malice, unforgiveness, hatred, all of them things. Eh? It's coming off of you. It's coming off of you. And now you have taken on this brand new individual. This brand new individual called love, where you keep no records of wrongs. I'm not saying that you're not going to feel pain and that you're not going to feel hurt. But you have made that concerted effort saying, you know what, in spite of that person betraying me, in spite of that person hurting me, in spite of the financial rot I'm in, in spite of the health crisis that I'm in, I am going to be better because I'm on a success road. I'm going through the valley moment because it's a blessing moment. There is potential in this growth and development moment. I'm becoming a brand new individual i'm reinventing myself i'm becoming much better than i was before it matters not if you've made this decision right this moment right this moment is still an important important moment it means that you're going through your blessing moment so i don't want you to get sidetracked or daunted disturbed or despondent when you go through your valley moment because I know your valley moment is a blessing moment you're becoming a better individual remember we are not at the best us now I am not at the best me now you are not at the best you now but you have decided to make that concerted effort that I'm going to use my valley moment whatever your valley moment may be to become the better you the best you that is how you're using your valley moment. So valley moment is not a non-blessing moment. It is a blessing moment because you're becoming purified. You're becoming better. So all of the negative. Remember, your the feathers, like the eagle, it's changing. The beak is falling off because a better beak is coming on you. But you have to be alone sometime during the valley moment because guess what? No, you need to come to terms with yourself. You need to face yourself. You can't have any distractions when you're facing yourself. You realize, oh God, I struggle with little for unforgiveness. Yeah, so Jesus may have a temper problem. Lord, may have a hunger issue. Me mean, me stingy. Oh, I love to curse and slander and gossip. I have an envy problem. I have a gossip issue. I have a slander issue. And you name all of them. Fornication, adultery, all of these things. You have the issues. And you've made the decision that look here, Lord. You're showing me them. But I want to be better. Success and knock on my door. I'm a letting success. Health and knock on my door. I'm a door. I'm a letting health. Wealth and knock on my door. I'm a letting wealth. You're knocking at my door. I'm letting you in. That is what it is. The valley moment, that's what it is doing. It's a blessing moment. It's making you better. It's not supposed to make you bitter. 
So really, we're not supposed to say, why us? Why not you? You said you want to travel the road of success. You said you want to travel the road of success. I want somebody to tell me that they don't want to be on the road of success. Then I say, what's the purpose of living? And coupled with your valley moment, it means that you're going to be persistent in achieving your goals and your dreams and your desires. Persistence is basically faith. If you have faith, you persist. If you persist, you have faith. It means that you trust in the almighty God and you believe in the talents and the gifts and the abilities that he has given to you and the help that he has provided for you through others that he can take you to the next level, which is the success road. But you have to go through your valley moment and you have to understand that your valley moments are blessing moments. Not moments to disturb you and send you all off course. That's not your valley moment. That's not the intention of your valley moment. Your valley moment is to make you better. Your valley moment is to make you stronger. Your valley moment is to make you wiser. The valley moment is to make you richer, healthier. And surround you with the kinds of persons that you were meant to be surrounded by. Now it's not devoid of being surrounded by persons who are not for you. But you know how to channel your time and to organize yourself in such a way where whatever they do or whatever they say doesn't infiltrate you. Because here, entire here has been made whole. Has been transformed. Because all those feathers and the beak came off just like the eagle when he's changing. The beak falls off. The feathers come off because you're transforming. You're metamorphosizing into success. It doesn't seem that way now. But that's your destination. You have to see it. Call things that are not as though they were. You call them as though they were. So look at yourself 10 years or 5 years from you. Be surprised what you can achieve in 5 years. And you say, I see myself doing this. I see myself owning this. I know I have to go through the valley moment before. My parachute, I've got to jump. My parachute won't open. I'm going to get some hits. But guess what? The scripts, them going to heal. And when they heal, the parachute is going to open and soar me. And take me to my destiny. Where I belong. You belong in blessing destiny. You belong in success destiny. That is where you belong. In love destiny. That is where you belong. And that is why God says he knows the plans he has for you. Plans not to harm you. Plans to prosper you. He says he will use your gifts and present you before great men. Those are the kinds of plans that the Lord has for you. But you have to understand that your valley moments are the moments that will take you there. Your valley moments are the moments that will take you there. They don't feel good now. They're very uncomfortable now. But sometimes we have to get uncomfortable before we can become extremely comfortable we have to get we have to go through difficulties we just have to do it hard we have to face it we have to be persistent we have to be persistent and we have to trust the valley moments that the valley moments are gonna take us to better moments to brighter moments to beautiful moments that's what valley moments are doing. They're, they're, those are the things that the valley moments are doing for us. So I want you to not get despondent. I want you to not give up. I want you to trust in the valley moments because really they are blessing moments. Valley moments are blessing moments. Remember, you said you want success. So you have to understand the valley moment at the moment that will take you to success. Because you have to shed off all the unnecessary baggage. We are going to hold you back. 
unnecessary baggage or go stop your progress go stop your prosperity you have to get rid of that just like how the eagle went to change it have to take off the feather them it have to get rid of the old beak that beat them in and help it, it dull that beat they can't get the food where it need and the nourishment where it needs so it have to broke off the feather have to drop off him have to favor like when somebody threw acid pan you that's how he has to look before he becomes that beautiful soaring bird flying at altitudes that we can't understand as human beings and he goes on to live for another 30 40 years as long as human beings can live sometimes even out living on some human beings but you have to understand that your valid moments are blessing moments they're not here to kill you I'm encouraging you because I believe in you as I believe in myself. I did not understand a lot of things that I'm now seeing. I had to go through my own valley moments and I'm still, you know, going through them. And going through the valley moments, still going through them, allowed me to now understand life on the other side. So I had to flip over and look. It's like the looking glass. There's something in psychology talk about the looking glass. So I had to flip over, jump over. I kind of tweak it a little bit for this purpose. But I had to jump over and look across. And when I look across, I'm seeing the promised land. And I'm, I'm given that ticket, that visa, the passport, the multiple entry or whatever it is to go over to the promised land. But I have to walk through the mountain valleys. And then I cross over into my success land into the wealth land the health land all of those wonderful things that god says he has for me i have to be persistent i have to trust him so when i see a lot of things shedding and persons who don't belong in my friendship circle shedding i understand why so i'm encouraging you again don't get daunted, depressed, or despondent when you go through your valley moments. I, I am encouraging you and I'm letting you know that is really the blessing moment before you really experience blissful moments to make you better, not bitter. I hope what I've said really moves you into making that concerted effort to make changes that will not only benefit you but will benefit generations to come remember you know we are here to serve each other and whatever you do should make some contributions whether it's to your home to your friends to your co-workers to the world at large i encourage you I encourage you, I implore you, trust God, trust your valley moments, don't be daunted by it. And when he moves away, those that don't belong in your space don't feel any way. You have to get lonely before you get the friends that you so desire sometimes. He's just fashioning you and forming you in the way you really should be. And you're going to be happy about it. All right? So... Have a great day. Have a wonderful evening. If you really like my video, like it. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. Have a great and a wonderful afternoon.